Welcome to the Conway Select Board meeting of Tuesday, January 18th. And um, I hereby declare the meeting convened and we can go from there. The first item on the agenda is the minutes of the last meeting, January 10th. Everybody get a chance to look at them. They look great. Very good. Yep. Nice yep. job. I, I agree. So, so we'll make uh, a, a motion to uh, to approve them. Yes. Second. Second. Okay. Aye. All in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. I see Eric nodding her head. No, I um, roll call. Oh, she raised her hand. <laughs> I did. Yes. <laughs> um, we have four warrants tonight. We have an accounts payable warrant. Of one hundred and sixty-six thousand nine hundred and sixty-one dollars and sixty cents, payroll warrant of one hundred and eleven thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollars and thirty-five cents, a payroll deduction warrant for twenty-eight thousand fifty-eight dollars and eight cents, and that's one item. And then we need, so we take a separate vote on that, and then it's a activities warrant that's not a so um a motion to approve those three warrants so move seconded all in favor aye. aye it's unanimous and um and then we need a separate vote for the conway grammar school activities warrant and that was for two thousand two hundred and thirty seven dollars and twenty six cents um, there, so I, I, I took a look at that. There's that's fine too. So, anybody, uh, well, <laughs> so we'll make a motion to approve the Conway Grammar School activities warrant. Very good. Like that. All in favor, aye. aye. Aye, it's unanimous. Uh, meetings attended by select board members, Erica, none since our last meeting, Robert. Oh, well, we we did, the Conservation Commission went up and visited the solar site to look at the driveway. They're making improvements to the driveway. And it looks like they've completed all of the improvements that we talked about and that the experts that were hired, uh, you know, that they said should work. But it's hard to know whether they're going to work. So um, we really have to wait until next spring to see how they work because everything is frozen and covered by snow right now. Um, but you know, we're hoping so. Aren't we all? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I had several, uh, school committee, school, school related stuff. Um, first of all, I did, we, we had a marathon, a scheduled four hour bargaining session, the first two hours with our grammar school in uh, um, IA union and the second two hours with the grammar school teachers union. So um, other than to say that is um, truly burdensome public service, I will just pass on that. Uh, <laughs> any, fur any further comment? <clears throat> and we had a, um, a grammar school uh, school committee meeting where there was a budget unveil a draft budget unveil and um, Veronique dialed into that and we participated and we we discussed um, the possibility of the use of ARPA money for some of the items that would but specific budget line items um, a one-time only ex retirement expenditure I don't know if we talked about that last time but so we, we talked about that with the school committee they didn't make an official request um, for that one line item. Um, so that, that was the result of that meeting. So for, for the, the, the request was that ARPA be, that ARPA money be used to fund that instead of town assessment. And that would bring the budget down from something that would scare little children to something that um, is, is completely reasonable and, <laughs> and, and doable. So, um, so I don't, I, we'll see. So as ARPA money requests come in, are they things we can approve? Rarity, do you know how that approval works? Um, well, the, the, the final say is up to the select board and that's actually sort of up for discussion because the entire landscape has now changed because 
we don't have to fit into any one, um, you know, we're not restricted as we were, and now we can use it as revenue replacement, which means the entire 559,000, you know, can be used for what the town wishes, which then sets it up, I think, to have a discussion about the wish list and what are the priorities for the town. And, you know, maybe we can put, maybe we can put this on the agenda for a vote on, on it for, for next week. But, you know, I will say that with respect to the, so we're not deliberating, but I'll just, just to give you the information with respect to the ARPA um, use for that one line item um, that did get specifically approved. Um, it'd be, because it's, it's, it's not a debt, it's a, we're something we're contractually obligated to do by collective bargaining agreement. And it's what it's six retirements and it's this, the sick pay buyback provisions that are, Contractual, we're contractually obligated to pay. So it's a one time only expenditure. And um, I forget what the exact amount was, I believe $120,000. And so that, if you know anything about the size of the grammar school budget, that's a, that's a huge, um, um, th that's just a, what is it? That's, that's it's like five nine or 10%, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so and if, if that's not in the budget, that the grammar school budget goes from a 9% increase on town tax assessments to a 3%. So that's just information. Um, but, but so as organizations, you know, like the Conway Grammar School plan their budget, they would have to know whether or not we, you know, or, or I mean, they could yeah, have it in their budget and then how we fund it maybe is something we could deal with later, uh, but, knowing that we would cover that might impact other things. Well, yeah, it's, well, it's primarily our tax rate, but, um, but yeah, be, because they, <clears throat> they, uh, their, their priorities and whatnot that are funded or in, they've, they've already submitted their draft budget. I don't think they have other things that are, I know that they have some capital items that are on a wish list if they had extra um, whatever, if, if they're going for anything more than what they submitted in their draft budget, it's going to be capital items because they decided to attempt, they're debating whether to just pull their capital request because they were so scared of the 9% budget. Right, um, right. So, so <clears throat> and, and as you know, they have a capital stabilization fund for the grammar school. So um there you go. Anyway, so that's a lot of information just to dwell on, but just think about it. We can talk about it next next time and put it up for a vote. Great. Um, but yeah, so that was the the one thing about the, that that the Google Meet does is that you can all participate in these meetings and you can coordinate these things so that we can actually have a meeting before the school budget is done. So that just like what you said, Bob, the timing can work for everybody and you can be part of the process instead of just be handed a finished document and then how to deal with it. So but that was very good. And um, do we pub no public comment, old business, new business. Beth Gershman yes. to request approval for the DLTA grant to help with the master plan and to create a list of top three DLTA grant requests. That's me. Hi, Hi Beth. I'm here. Hi, guys. I, I gotta say, I do like a meeting from my couch. Yeah, there's something <laughs> said for that. From my couch. Um, uh, so, um, Initially, when um, I got put on the agenda for this, I was thinking that I was going to ask for approval to go ahead with a community one-stop grant process to apply for money for uh, to indicate interest in a master plan process. But Veronique and I spoke about this, and I realized that this was uh, more than I wanted to get into and more than the planning board would be able to like, you know, host and super expensive too. So my thinking now is that um, particularly because the open space and recreation plan is so excellent, so excellent that um, 
what I would want help with is just a few sections of what would normally be in a master plan. And the, um, that's not, I have three, of course, <clears throat> three requests for DLTA funds. And that's, neither of those are number one, but um, <clears throat> number one is um, to continue getting help um, from FERCOG on updating the existing floodplain bylaw, because we kind of have to do that. And we want to do that for this town, year's town meeting. And so we've both got a lot of it in motion, but we really continue to rely heavily on FERCOG's assistance for this. Um, and additionally, a river corridor management, the, the concept of river corridor overlay zoning, but not for this year's town meeting. Hope if there's a fall town meeting, we would push it to then because putting them together, we think makes it too confusing and likely to tank them. Just our fear, that's our fear. And so um, the river corridor management would be an information session. And again, we'd be seeking assistance from FERCOG for this presentation. Um, so that's my number one request for DLTA funding. And then my number two request is updating a master plan chapter. So um, in the past, we've had FERCOG do a housing assessment for us, a housing analysis or whatever it's called, a report. So we have this report, it's probably three years old now. I don't think much has changed in the three years, but um, what we were, but we've been kicking around this idea of trying to figure out a way to create more not big A affordable, little A affordable housing in town um, for, you know, like younger families wanting to move into town who cannot possibly come up with the kind of funding now required for this sort of thing. Um, so this would be like convening a focus group um, or a small maybe ad hoc committee to work on updating a housing master plan chapter, along with looking at um, thinking about rezoning for uh, cluster development, which is something it's, it's different. It's, so it's different than uh, subdivision zoning, which we aren't a part of su the subdivision zoning in the, in the state. We never accepted that. But, and it's different than the approval not required for like back lots or, you know, land with enough frontage. It's actually taking a piece of land and looking at it as a, a and well, I suppose like the way it is in what's that development off of 116 by the bank? What's that called? Whatever that's called. That's what I think of as cluster development in a way. Like it was, it was done thoughtfully. It was done to leave open space in the middle and put the houses around the edges. So, so to encourage that sort of thing. And some of our neighboring towns are working on this too, like Waitley and I think Buckland or Shelburne. And anyway, so that's where I'm at. Are there any questions? <laughs> What's the advantage of cluster zoning versus the way it is? So if you read the open space plan, um, there's a section in there that talks about one of the one of the difficulties with the way we have zoning now, which it, it really encourages a lot of zoning along. Um, you know, it, it encourages stuff along it, it existing roads, but um, but also back into back into um, open space, so that it kind of splinters up open space, um, and it creates. Um, it's not very thoughtful, basically. It's, it's kind of like very uh, independently managed, obviously, development. And so people sell these lots, you know, and there isn't, um, there isn't any thinking about what makes sense in terms of uh, views or the the habitat that's there or a variety of things. I don't know, that's my thinking. On it. That's my understanding of why it would be better to have um, cluster development because you could give it, you could give it some more thoughtful approaches and take a look at what the, what the 
parcel was like and what what made the most sense in terms of view sheds and habitat. That's my, that, but that's just me riffing on this, so. In general, our, the, our, the board, you know, as long as I can remember has been very in favor of affordable housing and, you know, either with a capital A or a small a, however, you know, you, you're describing various flavors of it. But, but yes, exactly. How do we attract more, you know, lower income or smaller new, new families looking for their first home, younger families that have kids to want to move into Conway? And, and, and to me, the, the way to do that would be um, to allow subdivisions uh, and in some way, I mean, you know, uh, yeah. townhouses or, or, um, yeah something more akin to what we were looking for for the senior housing yeah. that was gonna go in. And I'm not sure is senior housing not subject to our normal bylaws so, that, so they could do something that feels a lot like a sub, little subdivision for senior housing. Well, when we, when we wrote that bylaw for senior housing, Several of us kept thinking, why aren't we making this less age dependent? And why aren't we making- Exactly, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so we'd be revisiting that idea, I guess. And um, yeah, I, it's interesting because subdivisions are a scary thing for lots of lots of people. I mean, are people me afraid included. of a trailer park? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the big fear was um, with, with the idea of cluster housing more in the traditional way houses are clustered. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. when I when I drive around, uh, what's it called? Dragon Dragon Hill, is it called in Shelburne? Right. Um, it's beautiful. I mean, you know, and, the, really and the houses nice. are two or three houses connected to each other, separated, mm -hmm. you know, but um, I, I don't see why we don't want that in Conway. Yeah. And I don't know that the, I don't know that the the limiting factor, I'm not sure what the limiting factor is. I'm not sure that it's only our zoning. I'm not sure that it's that, but um, this would be sort of an exploration of this. It would be a starting point, I think. And I personally, I think we'd be building on the age restricted housing sort of thing, um, but I don't know. And, and you know, uh, we had some focus on this, but um, with some alternative ideas, like some towns in the area do this thing where they have um, funding available for people to borrow at no, no interest, um, a certain amount of money for down payment on, on houses. Um, Leverett put this into place, but then in Leverett, because it was, um, it could only be up to a certain amount of money for the house, the way they set it up. No one has been able to take advantage of it because there are no houses in Leverett that, that are ever less than this amount of money that they, that they put as a threshold. So there's some um, experimental, not experimental, but there's some interesting and innovative ways to do this. I mean, right now in Conway, we have absolutely no affordable housing as you all know which is kind of shameful um and i don't and know the possibility of one the 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 the, the lot habitat. that got habitat for humanity the lot that got passed in the last town meeting yes there's and, a possibility but i don't even know if that does that qualify as affordable housing i mean it, it's a it's kind of a standalone thing i don't know if it's the same it would be yes, affordable. It will be a. It will be classified as an official affordable house. It will be restrictions okay. and everything okay. that's required to. So we'll have one. <laughs> we'll have one. It'll. It's our first. Yeah. It's our first. That's a good way to think of it. It's our first. It's a foot in the door. Well, anyway. Um, so those are my three DLTA things, and actually, I do believe that two and three that I spoke of. So the so updating a chapter of the master plan on housing. And Veronique and I were talking earlier today and maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure the best way to do this, but um, um, like to form an, an, the same kind of group that would be meeting on the 
economic stuff in town would be meeting on that. And then two and three really are very interrelated. So maybe this is only two things, but I don't know how per crowd we look at it. I, for me, I think it would be great if we think of it as two things, because we do have a third one that we're, you know, yeah. we've been asked to also consider. And a fourth one as well. Yeah. Okay, well, we could have more, yeah. Well, but, well, okay, just, well, just for, just, I mean, I'm just speaking for you, for because we, we have now for multiple years talked about the uh, the electric vehicle charging thing. So, um, and that was, that was also one of the categories and- Oh, cool. You know, you get, we got dead ended last time because we asked the school whether there was a need, you know, what, if we put one in there, would, would anybody use it? And at the time, nobody there had a, an electric vehicle. I, I believe since then, there's at least one, but. Um, well, also people going to games there probably would have electric vehicles, like going well, to the- I mean, stuff. one place to put it would be at the Conway Grammar School so that- But, teachers... but I'm, getting, I'm getting ahead of myself because okay, that right. would, so, That's so number basically, four because number three was the conservation agent that we've been asked to That's sign. That's right. That's right. Okay. The, well, how the, about if I, I'm, I'm happy to drop my third thing and just ask for because this can easily be rolled into updating a master plan because hopefully updating a master plan means you have a plan at the end to do something, right? That's my updating the master plan, especially with <laughs> affordable housing in mind. Not affordable housing so much as just not keeping it so limited, keeping it like looking at sort of creative solutions for housing in Conway. I think one, one of our big uh, opportunities that is going by the wayside is that we have more than 70 vacant homes in our town. What do you mean 70? Do you mean their second homes or their vacant homes? No, no, as an unoccupied. Get out of town. What do you mean? That's seventy vacant homes. Yeah. Where are these people? I don't each, understand. Each one is a separate story, but um, but but yeah, yeah, and and so that's that's one of the things. It, that, you know, most of it is um, kids that have moved out and are now the owners of the home and um, all that sort of thing. Just, but but yeah, it's. I'm but shocked. That, yeah, that, that is something I, I keep on, because every once in a while you pass by a gorgeous, you know, you pass by homes that you know are unoccupied and you think, boy, you know, it's, it's a shame because that house should still be lived in. Is, is there a, a way we could look at all of those reasons to see if we can find a way to do something? I mean, and, and, but, but respect people's privacy? Also, vacant is different from abandoned. I mean, just because someone doesn't live there doesn't mean that that's not a property that. Right, that's the thing. Cares yeah. about and okay. could think about. All right. So there, so, the taxes are being paid, but there's no one living in the home. Correct. Yeah. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, so, and and that's I'm that's surprised. That's, that that's almost ten percent of our structural yeah of, of the number of structures in town residential structures in town. So. And these are not second homes, so people aren't they're not right. seasonal homes because that's a big number. Yep. Yeah, they're just unoccupied, totally unoccupied. So, um, all right. So yeah, the DLTA there was a time constraint on that. We were supposed to like vote that and then sign it. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Today. Okay. Well, I'm glad I'm under the wire here. <laughs> so, Veronique, we all were we, we all were supposed to have turned into you our requests. Um, I don't know if you got them all, and and are there other ideas that were among them, or have we now covered them? Um. Well, I can say we've covered the major ones. I mean, it was basically Beth, Phil, you, and I who had, you know, kind of filled it out and said what our, our priorities were. Um, I, I agree with Beth with the floodplain and the master plan. And then I was thinking since you'd requested the conservation, you know, looking into shared, um, that those would be our top three. I don't know what order um, you want to put them in, but 
Um, I mean, there's plenty of things on the list that are lovely to, to contemplate. There's other things that I'd like to look at too, but I think, you know, those are probably the biggest priority. Uh, I would love to have it EV charging, but I think that there are, there's already support for doing that. Uh, um, I mean, FERCOG periodically has, has courses on how you, how you get grants. Um, there is state support for that. I, I don't know that we need to make that a something that we fund for COG or that they get grant money on our behalf mm -hmm. to help us with. But and I hate to say that. I mean, you know, as much as I believe in EV charging, but yeah. Can I have a question here? Sure. Stupid, stupid question, stupid transparent question. What's the um what time frame is do these run on? I'm always unclear about this cycles? Um, that's a really good question. I actually do not know the answer to that. I'll have to get back to you on what how they run on. Good to know. It just says that we, um, if we all respond by the 28th, they aim to have projects selected by early February. Okay. And it could be, I mean, obviously the DLTAs are annual, but I don't know you know, I would assume each one has its own kind of specific time frame okay. when it'll get done. So it's so it might be the calendar year, but it might be that state the state fiscal year ending you know the end of June always seems to loom large on all these things though. So I don't. That's uh, true. Okay, so if it if it was the end of June, this would give me two minutes to get these things done. Yeah. Okay, great. I, I'd be surprised if it was that quick only because yeah, that seems so we just, got, we just got these. So it would seem to me it would have to run longer than that. Okay. Uh, All right. But you'll let me know. Well, well I defer to your wisdom select board and you can tell me what it, your prices are. And it's okay to ask for an extension on these things too. When, if, if the deadline is like, like for instance, as, as one, as one has asked the, the carbon credit project, we do have an extension on our grant for that. So till, till the end of this June. So, um, which is good. Yeah, we're going to use it. Complicated as heck. It's so complicated. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. Uh, so, do we want to take a vote to approve our DLTA grant request with the uh, three items being uh, the flood in no particular order of importance: the floodplain, the master plan chapter, and the conservation agent. That's so moved. I would second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. Thanks, sure. you all. Thank you. And, you know, the other thing that, that, that I'm trying to begin to get people to start to take a look at is the access to the, just within this context of DLTA, we're, we're investigating a different route, but just, you know, we have this enormous dam on our river that um, hasn't been used for a hundred years and there's now an, a, an enormous pot of state money for freshwater dam removal and um, it we've been encouraged I've been encouraged to to have people take a look at it um, so it's not quite for Kagi it might just be strictly like directly with DEPE kind of a thing but um, it's it's yeah. it's something that I don't we don't we don't really have a lot of bandwidth to do this sort of thing in town, but um, I don't know. Just ha having seen have, having recently just read and seen about how the health of rivers is restored when the giant sediment sucking dam is removed, um, and they now have technology to remove sediment that they didn't before. Hmm. So, well, is it is is this a, a community one stop grant indication of interest? Piece? Uh, no, not really. Okay. It's, just, it's something that I was initially thinking about it being, but um, just a little bit of a little bit of kicking of the tires is like no, you, that's something that you go straight to the DEP with. Okay. Um, hey, I would support that one hundred percent. That sounds great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Somewhere around 40 years ago, the, the town, Jim Manuel was pursuing making electricity at that dam or, you know, restoring the yes. generation. 
And, yes. and it got a lot of pushback from Trout Unlimited. Well, and, uh, with threats of threat. lawsuit and yes, yes, and um, and since then that apparently the technology I've been told by people that know somebody that knows that the technology that they have to remove sediment is um, really advanced. So that they can the actually do it. Taking the dam uh, down might they, actually they be. Can, what I mean is that they can actually like take the sediment out of the and and truck it away, whatever. But they don't just flush it down the river and kill all the fish anymore. So, but Trout Unlimited might be in support of our taking the dam down, which which would be, you know, a a better, I think, uh, it would be easier to get get buy in. That's all. That would be kind of very controversial. <laughs> yeah, it will. But I mean, I'm sure they 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 start by taking a look at it. They take a good study or two. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah. That's how you find out what mm -hmm. it is. But we're we're apparently on some state list as of, of if they had their wishes of all the dams that they could remove, we're we're on a list. So yeah. good to be on that kind of list, I think. Yeah. So, so all um, right. Can I go eat dinner now, you guys? Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. See, Bye. See you later. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. So items not anticipated 48 hours. Um, we do actually have a couple of these. So the first one that made it onto the paper uh, agenda is discuss ordering additional COVID testing kits. Um, uh, and also discuss the, the new 800 number that Anybody in America can get now get what how many tests per month delivered directly to their door for free, courtesy of the federal government. And whether it still makes sense to go ahead and order all of our own, um, where even though it's ARPA money being spent and not taxpayer, does it still it's still there's still the opportunity cost of if we spend it on all that, then we're not spending it on other things, which could still include just giving it back to people did we already um, order tests that are we we ordered go ahead Veronique. So yeah so so the update is i i did order the initial 180 which is actually a case of 92 packs they have not even they've been delayed to the vendor so the vendor doesn't even have them we were supposed to have them in hand on the 10th and i have not ordered the other 410 that were approved last week um because honestly i i can't get people to get back to me. So, right. um, and then when this came out in the news over the weekend, um, plus I just got the link from another town administrator. I think a bunch of people have seen where you can go to USPS and order right. or to be sent direct. I just filled that out myself today. So, so then the question came up, well, do we want to spend the ARPA money on this if people are already going to be able to get them mailed directly to their homes for free? My immediate reaction was like, no. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but we, that we shouldn't be that should we cancel the order for the 180 well that i'd actually like to keep because we were going to give them out to the ems services and also to the board of health for people who were homebound and that sort of thing and i think it makes sense to have that few on hand but the 410 which would be actually what 900 and i'm sorry 820 i can't add um I, you know that has not been ordered so the, but just the, the, the remarkable times that we live in, this is a specific issue that every week we've talked about it before the ink is dry, like the reality of involving that particular issue has changed so much that we have right. to revisit the decision on a weekly basis. Yeah. It's, it's remarkable. Um, well, so I would agree with Erica that we could just continue to hold off on ordering any, any more. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, although it, it, you know, we'll see how, uh, how if people actually can get get the ones that the government is, is well, right. But in. if they can't get them from the government, like I mean, they can't get them from us either. I mean, we're, right. we're in the same situation. I mean, I feel like you know, a public, a local public board of health has a very important role to play. But in a national pandemic situation, like distributing, you know, test kits like this, that's not like unless there's going to be like far more coordination with the federal government and a local board of health, like that shouldn't be the responsibility of the board of health. 
to do this. I, I just, um, we don't have that capacity. Aside from the fact that the 1-800 number gets them delivered to your house. And, well, in um, yeah, theory. Yeah, like, yeah, well. We don't know, has anyone tried that yet? <laughs> you, I, I think tomorrow's the first day that you can, yeah, tomorrow's the first day that you can order them. Right, well, yeah, I just, I mean, this is, I just feel like this is above and beyond um, what local town should be expected to, to do. At this point, frankly, right now at this point, yes. Um, I feel like we should not order any more tests. So I'll second that. All right. <laughs> Aye. 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 Sir. Sure. Oh, well, I guess so. We rescinded the vote from last week yeah. as well. That's right. <laughs> well, I mean, like you said, things change, like yeah. you know, from day to day. So it's, yeah, and that's fine. But I still have the board's permission to distribute them to our EM, you know, fire, police, ambulance, and the board of health. Correct? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And some for maybe for town offices, depending on. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. And so, um, go ahead, Bob. Well, I, I, I had one other thing that this is, um, maybe this is not the right place to where to put it in our agenda, but we're nearly, nearly to the agenda. But I just wanted everyone to know about Chris Collins, who yeah, is the manager of FCAT. And Chris had written me shortly after Christmas that he had gotten COVID during Christmas. And that, you know, but he, he seemed okay. And af short after that, I don't know whether it was, you know, I mean, it's due to COVID, but he, he, he uh, began having additional heart problems and he went into the hospital and, you know, it, it may turn out that he needs to have heart surgery. And uh, so because of that, he is not at FCAT, but there is a guy at FCAT who is kind of his second in command who... Chris has been kind of grooming just in case something like this happened. And, uh, and so yesterday we were able at FCAT to do the payroll, which is a very complicated procedure and, uh, and it went fine. And, um, and we're in the process, we have a board meeting on Thursday to, to talk about what other things that are normally Chris's jobs we can, we can pass on to somebody else Per, and, and that might be like Ed Margolis's accounting office who does, who does a lot of the accounting stuff. And we're approaching tax season. I'm sure all of you guys are now starting to get things in the mail of, that you'll have to keep and do before April 15th. And, and FCAT has exactly the same stuff. So, so uh, and, and I mean, FCAT is not Conway, a Conway issue, but, but it's it's part of our four town you know yeah. group and 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 they do a great job of putting up all of the zoom meetings like we're having right now on their video on demand and and on our cable television channels and and uh i i just you know we in the we in the board of directors of fcat are wishing chris well and there is a gofundme page uh, if people would like to help contribute because he's going to have additional expenses that are over and above his health care. And, uh, and we'll be talking at the board of directors meeting over what to do about his, his ins health insurance and, and, and how to deal with his employment status. So all, all of that's coming up. Well, best well, wish in my brief um, tenure, it's only been like a year and a half. I don't know, maybe almost two years that I've been on board. I very much appreciate all that Chris Collins has done. And I mean, I had no idea until I played this role. <laughs> but I really appreciate Chris Collins' role and kind of like supporting like democracy, local democracy. Yeah, that, that's his big issue. Yeah. Uh, uh, local news, because, you know, in Chris's mind, there is not much in the way of local news anymore. We all watch either Fox or MSNBC. And they don't do any local news, and couple, some people may still watch Channel Five, but that's even not Conway local news. That's that's Hartford news or Springfield news or Boston news, and and uh, and the recorder is struggling, uh, and and so so to we on the board, the role of FCAT is becoming more and more important, and and it's hard 
you know, it's hard for us to brag too much about FCAT, but I can tell you, they win many awards every year for the shows that they produce and they do submit some of their shows. And sometimes these are sports. Sometimes these are, you know, uh, filming Festival of the Hills or filming things, uh, you know, that they put up and they win prestigious awards for New England awards. They beat everybody in New York, which is pr pretty amazing. So best, best series on local polka I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Polka has a lot of people that want to watch po Polka. I know, I know. Uh, and and uh, yeah. I've gone out of my way to make sure that my parents don't know how to watch select board <laughs> meetings live or recorded. <laughs> funny. <laughs> like, trust me, you don't want that whole contingent from like Alaska and the West Coast like participating. <laughs> I assure you regularly people say to me, hey, I watched the select board meeting the other day and and then they ask questions about what we talked about. It, you know, right. yeah. it, it, so. it does get watched. I think more people watch it on video on demand than watch it on channel 12. Um, we're in the process of finalizing finally our franchise agreement, in which case we will be working towards having a channel 15 on Comcast that will be worthy of FCAT. Um, it'll have, it'll be just Conway stuff, but it'll have all of our programming. If people want to watch the Conway school committee meetings and, and board of, and board of health meetings and, and select board meetings, they will all be on our channel 15. And there's a good possibility they will become high def instead of the very poor quality standard definition that they are now. And, and in which case the movies will be worth watching if you've ever tried watching the movies they have on Saturday night or the cartoons they have one for kids in the morning on channel channel 12. They're excellent. They do excellent programming, but they will be coming to you in much higher quality. So that's our hope. Yeah. And then no one will ever run for public office again. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not that bad, is it? You, you really don't mind having to be on television. I, I don't. I don't watch. I don't look. I never. I've never Googled myself. I don't want to know. Go ahead. It's it's, it's not that bad. Uh, um, so we still okay. So we still have another uh, item not anticipated. I think Veronique, you had one, right? Then we talked this afternoon about you had one. Um. No, I thought the only one was the the one that I got on about the COVID test. Am I forgetting something? I don't know. Oh, I don't know, but so we did. We did. Get, I, I did get another one in the mail today, and that was um, just. I think there there was a pretty tight deadline on the turnaround, so we don't really have time to put it on next week. I think, and it came in the mail today, and that was from the state police, the colonel superintendent oh. yeah. of the state police, which was a new five year memorandum of understanding regarding our emergency dispatch. Um, which would stay the same as it is for the previous five years, and it would still be at no additional cost um, to the town. So um, it's basically keeping it for another five years. And they the, they noticed that the previous agreement had lapsed and they were not operating under an agreement. So they thought it best to get it all proper and everything. So. Yeah, the signature on this is from 1227-21 <laughs> from the state police. But yeah, I don't so, I didn't see a deadline on here, but yeah, we should they they said they're gonna make it retroactive to January 1st. So so it, and it was one of those things where it's just it just calls for the chair's signature, but I think everybody should know about this and mm -hmm. yeah, because that's it's it's actually one of the things that I'm kind of grateful for that, you know, we, I bashed the state and we bashed everything, but this is one of those that we actually get our emergency dispatch um, at no extra cost mm -hmm. um, other than what we're, what, what we're, we're paying already. And there have been attempts to, uh, and, and they've been talking, I think the state said 10, 15 years ago that they were no longer going to be providing that service for rural towns. But since then, they have never done anything about it. That it. so, um, <clears throat> and and so the the agreement that that we're signing is to just keep it that way, and that we're not going to have to pay anything more. So, however, but 
but that we should know that if the state does come around and say um, all you towns have to pay for this from now on, then w the agreement would become null and void and we'd have to negotiate it something different. But fair. Uh, yeah. And the one of if, if you were paying attention when when Greenfield was uh, changing or voting to do their lot, redo their library or um, build a new library and instead of using that fantastic old building that I love so much anymore. Um, and, and, and that they uh, um, were talking about the fire station being moved. And I, I, I don't even know what they ended up doing, but I think all of the above. And um, FRDA and, too. Right. And they, uh, one of their, one of their proposals was that Greenfield become the emergency dispatch for the whole County and that all of the towns pay into it. Um, and that um, basically so that all of the towns would then pay, be paying for their upgrade struck, you know, the, 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 their upgrade, all, all of their infrastructure upgrade. Um, but that, that didn't last that long, but it's just one of those things that in the future, we're always gonna have to be vigilant for this. If that's not, that wasn't the first attempt to grab this emergency dispatch and turn it into a fee service and it won't be the last either so we, we hear a lot of complaints about state services but i do not hear complaints about the emergency dispatch yeah, yeah. for a while there was serious radio problems and they you know looked into that and did an excellent study with with vercog by the way and and have purchased new radios that are working really well uh, yes the, those radios, by all accounts and purposes, are, are doing well. And just so, just so you know, I did I did run into Kenny walking home from the town hall, and um, and I just said we got the MOU about that, and he said, "Are they? Are they is it still free?" I said, "Yep." He said, "Sign it. I don't need to read it." So <laughs> then, what what do we have a motion to sign the uh, emergency dispatch request? If you yeah, I second that. Sounds like you made the motion, Bob. Yeah. Sure, it's a five-year memorandum of understanding governing. Right. Yeah, I'll vote aye. Do it. Aye. Um, and and it's nice that you you checked with Kenny. I, you know, I mean, I, I I would have voted for it even if you yeah. didn't say that. But uh, yeah, good, good. So it's unanimous. And do we? Um, so that was. Do we have a town administrator update? Yes, it's incredibly brief. <laughs> I mean, since it's weekly now, it's like, you know, um, I just wanted to let you know that I've had preliminary budget meetings with highway IT and the assessor's office um, that our public safety building working group met again, and we're now researching cost estimates for um, potentially creating offices in the back of each of the bays. We may also look into putting up a whole separate structure on the outside, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, and then also the potential for drilling a well um, to take care of the water at that building. So we're looking at estimates, just estimates. <laughs> no. And wow, and is there fun? I mean, I, I heard you say that and I just thought ARPA. <laughs> well, that, that's oh. certainly, um, and we really should, um, we, you know, I, I'm not sure how you want to reach out. I certainly have heard from some people about how they feel we should um, spend the ARPA money, but I really do think that a wish list of things like this, um, also such as um, perhaps spending it on the mod lift um, or, you know, some kind of lift for the town hall, I think we should. I think we should have a list of priorities for the town, but that could certainly be one for creating a, a better public safety building. And the beauty for me is the ADA compliance coordinator is that we would have offices for those three departments that would be accessible as opposed to being upstairs here at the town offices and that dreadful staircase. So, not to mention so not being able to get a wheelchair in the door. <laughs> Okay, so, so I mean, Ronnie brings up a really good point about the ARPA. What are we going to do about ARPA? Because, um, and and I'll just I'll just speak freely about this because we had we had we had a work we have a working group, an ARPA working group, and it's one of 
the, when we started a working group, when we had the ARPA law mm -hmm. and there was some technical bits to it and there was definitional bits to it and it was, okay, let's get, let's get some backup for, uh, you know, to see whether, whether the, some ideas that we have can fit within the law. Okay. And now what they did, the final interpretation of the law changes week to week, um, although now it's final, but basically we can spend it for most, if not all of whatever municipal priorities we want. And so, so I'm, I'm at the point where I'm beginning to feel a little bit uncomfortable about having these discuss or having any of like a discussion about municipal spending priorities it, with like a working group that is not, that's not an open meeting. It, that nobody takes minutes and there's no whatever that to, to me, we're straying into like the area that should be discussed publicly and on the record. And we should solicit, you know, what, whatever, which adds to the burden for Veronique and for everybody else and makes for longer meetings. But I don't really know. I mean, I, if I'll just put this out there and just solicit your feedback because um, if you think that we should screen everything through the working group still, you know, we can do that. Um, but, I, you know, I, I'm just at the point where I just have begin, begun to have second thoughts about doing that because it feels too much like town, you know, the heart of town stuff. You know, what do we want to spend our, what are our priorities? What do we want to spend money on? Right. When I think about like, you know, what are priorities for the town? I, 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 I feel the same way. Like I'm kind of uncomfortable. Like, I feel like I have, you know, like when I think about like this town there, like I have priorities, but I don't know that that's like, that that necessarily reflects like the entire town, even though I'm an elected official. Um, I mean, like literally for me, like when I think about priorities for the town, it's things that make the town sustainable, like a town where people move to where they have kids where people continue to like live and reproduce and like make a living like for me that's my priority for this town like i want my kids to come back here and live here and be able to like you know buy a house here and like have a job like you know somewhere in the area um but i but i get what phil's saying like i feel like if we talk about like you know we have this amount of money that we're able to spend like you know obviously like yeah we're this elected body but for us to decide like okay this is the priority for this like you know, enormous chunk of money. Um, I, I kind of agree. Like it's, it, it's a larger conversation that I feel like needs to involve more than just like, you know, the ARPA committee or the, you know, you know, some subcommittee. It, it's, it's really like a town discussion. Like this is our town. What do we want it to look like in five, 10, 15, 20 years, you know? And, and, you know, there's, uh, you know, the, the, there, there, um, yeah, I, I like I, to me, I, I was worried about just even screening ideas with them at this point because that the, just at the application of any filter would minimize certain ideas. But, um, but basically, you know, um, I, I, the, we, we, we already have a couple of requests for, for, for its use, and we have some other possibilities as well and I, I think um you know i i i don't know I, you know just to, to just make the working group ask the working group just to function during select board meetings well and anything to, that the working group is working on was going to be sent to the select board anyway it's not the decision making body it was just there to advise and you know, we set it up when, like you said, the rules were different. Now they've changed the rules. We weren't even sure we were going to be able to spend all the money. I'll be frank in the beginning because of the rules. There are certain things that I think the working group is on top of that would certainly be good to bring into the conversation. Um, but then I'd also, and one of the other plans down the road was of course gonna be, because this is a big part of what ARP is asking is to engage the community and how they've been affected. You know, I mean, we did all, you know, we put out in the currents, you know, have you been affected by, by COVID, by the pandemic? And if so, you know, how, and cause that's one of the things that the ARPA funds was supposed to be for. So, but I, you know, I agree. I think it's, it's very much an all town decision, but the question is how do you want to 
Um, how do you want to approach that? I guess is what I would say. Our meetings aren't so full that we don't, we couldn't spend 10 minutes yeah. pretty often, you know, you know, talking about things that the working group is thinking about or things that we would like people in town to think about mm -hmm. uh, and, and to get back to Veronique or get back to the working group. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, having it be a little more public and doing it through the select board meetings. Yeah, yeah you could have that be a running agenda, um, you know, item for, I, I think that would be great. Yeah, we, but we can't take forever to make this deci the decisions over, yeah, I mean, just like the school, you know, it would help them. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, the, the, the school asked, you know, on the record for us to consider it, and they said, you know, their ne the next monthly meeting is... The vote on the budget so yeah yeah um i will just point out that if we want to make sure that in any um fiscal year we do not um expend more than seven hundred fifty thousand dollars with the federal monies because yeah. then it will trigger a single audit i don't think we're going to have that issue i just want to make sure it's front and center <laughs> you know so that we don't decide we're going to spend the entire amount in this fiscal year and then you know we've got other federal monies coming in that will could potentially trigger it, um, but sure. I mean, and we. Could my idea for a municipal hot tub will have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and I could just have, have a running. To present it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. And argue for it at a subsequent <laughs> select board meeting. But I, I could have a running spreadsheet going that we just pop up on the screen that lets you know, you know, okay, we've already spent about 1500 on the COVID test. That's the only thing we've spent so far out of ARPA. And we could just, as you approve it, I can just take us down on the running. This is what we have left. And that would know, be really wanna... helpful. Yeah. Veronique, honestly, if that's not too much trouble, I oh. feel like I would like, I would love to be able to just see that visual. Like, <laughs> yeah. And it's nice. Can it, you know, I can just do a share screen and you look at it. That's kind of how I'm planning to do the budgets as it is, because I have a big master spreadsheet and we'll just pop them up on the screen and you can see them and approve it. And then I'll send it out to everybody after the meeting and we'll all be on the same page. You know? <laughs> and so when it comes down to like, you know, how we spend this money, like, is it, it's really up to us as a select board or how does, I mean, it, like if we had so like, we could say we want to spend 700 of the 750,000 on X and that, would fly. Um, uh, <laughs> there, there are some limitations. I... <laughs> it's the, yeah. like the, the, it's still. Um, I, I I think it's still as yet to be determined whether you could just like give it to everybody equally. I I don't know. Like like I if if say you wanted to, it, could you give all of the money equally to every resident? Right. And okay. I, like something like that. I don't know whether. But without without discerning in some way who's been impacted and you know targeting it in some way, um, and but, I believe we also have to let them know that we have, as a town, have decided that this is the avenue we're going to take revenue replacement, and in doing so, it also thankfully puts us on to less recording and reporting, and <laughs> so which is nice. Um, yeah. So, and again, those are kind of the kinds of things that the ARPA working group was helping me with. So, <laughs> otherwise, it's just me. <laughs> You're doing a great job. <laughs> oh, thanks. But I really like having them <laughs> helping me out. It's uh, who would have thought fun. five years ago we'd be talking about not having, being careful not to spend more than seven hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars a single year. <laughs> yeah, you know I. I was thinking that the other day that this stuff, this, these are good problems to have. Yeah. And these are, you know, considering how grim some of these decisions and some of these discussions have been these past few years. Um, and I also think we ought to, we ought to, um, you know, before we decide to allocate all of it, look through the budget season and see, because there are some areas that may be less than last year, that kind of thing that, you know, just a, just a thought. Yeah. And, and I also thought, you know, in general, there's going to be more and more pressure just to alleviate assessments and lower tax burdens. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. But if, but if we can come up with a working list, 
Yeah. And, you know, put it up on the screen for people to see and then they can get back to me and say, well, what's your priority? You know, what maybe we could do an assessment that way and see what people are thinking. And, you know, and if people are watching, as you say, <laughs> then, which would be great, then we could we could get some feedback and, you know. And I think some municipalities are doing more public, um, you know, more public outreach than than just the select board meetings. I don't know if you want to do an article for the currents, even or you know, we could put a survey in the currents. I mean, it's there's a lot of options for how to get the word out. Um, I don't know, people. It's I don't know. I think it's easiest now to just do survey that you can do in just two or three thumb clicks on your smart on your phone. Those are the ones that I don't know. Most people don't have attention spans for the surveys beyond that anymore. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it would be good to have some uh, a list, and and I know we've the, the the working group has talked about access to that there, there is that data does exist but um access to it can be as it should be difficult um you know who who's who out there is suffering the most <laughs> um you know is, people are entitled to their privacy as they suffer yeah. um, so um all right so so i guess the long and the short of it is we're going to make arpa a recurring theme and the yeah. a, 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 a regular budget item yeah a, a regular agenda item i mean that'd be great yeah yeah a regular agenda item and and um we'll put the vote on the school thing for next next week Sounds good. okay you want the vote for the school funds next week okay Okay. All right. Um, select board member comments or concerns, Erica? None. No, need to. Yeah. Um, I have no, no comments other than um, next time it's somebody else's turn to do union negotiations. And I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> well, you're on school committee, right? Yeah. Right there. Uh, but yeah, but it's like <laughs> um it's it's not it yeah yeah it's somebody else's turn next time so, uh mail what what else did we have besides that there was another piece of mail that we were going to talk about oh well oh uh, i can't think of another piece of mail again that's fine yeah. next week <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so next next week is mon next meeting is monday the 24th 24th 6 p.m same zoom time same zoom channel <laughs> see you all then 6 p.m, 6 PM. Oh, we have to vote to adjourn don't we yeah uh, yes motion to adjourn yes so moved. So second. Moved. Second. second aye aye you know, Oh, and wonderful, everybody. All right. Good night. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Bernie. Good to see you. Bye.